I call her and, you know, we're just like hysteric. Just can't even comprehend the fact that you spend a year and a half planning this and yeah. we've paid this non-refundable deposit. They're basically like, well, you can reschedule or you can reschedule. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Shanna. I'm 28. I am an elementary PE teacher. I am Kayla. I'm 32. I work at a nonprofit now and looking to become a teacher as well. I see 700, 800 kids and then like I'm that common denominator and so it's very stressful. We actually met online on Bumble. Mm -hmm. I never even was online before like that. So I, I didn't your really- your sister made the profile yeah, for you, so, right? Yeah, so I didn't really know what to expect. And then I also like catfish a lot too. So I'm <laughs> de definitely thinking, you know, of course I'm gonna be catfish, like that would be me. This girl could not be hurt. I, I don't think know. my selling point was, I promise I'm not a serial killer. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, you like, still could be. <laughs> and then once I think we got to know each other, then yeah. we hung out all the time. I had told my best friend a month and a half into dating, I think I'm going to marry her. Because she's like, are you crazy? You've been dating this person, I don't know if she said like six or eight weeks. How would you know that? Like everybody says, oh, this person's different. This person's different. And I was like, no, I know everybody says that, but for real, this person's different. I really think I'm going to marry her. I proposed in Savannah and it's like this really beautiful drive and it's a mile and a half of these oaks and these super old trees and it's beautiful you know the moss is hanging yeah, over the drive really and it's really pretty and I rented it out early before it opened and my friend she was like hiding in her truck she's a photographer so she took our you know kind of candid pictures there I'd say within a week we were already looking at venues we ended up picking this place it's called Santa Fe River Ranch about 30 minutes north of us in the middle of nowhere and it's a working farm it was just a really beautiful venue Hugh and I had went out there first and toured it and then we brought her mom with us and she was like oh my god I love this and, and she's crying yeah. and <laughs> it was really great yeah. I'd say we're the month and a half out yeah. from our wedding and I am had a conversation with Kayla and I was like, do you think we're going to have to cancel our wedding? <laughs> like, no, like this, it, we won't have to cancel our wedding. Yeah. My work closed down for a couple months. So that was also like terrifying too, because like, holy crap, am I losing my job? Like, can we do this? Can we afford right. this? COVID was such a big thing, but then on top of that, dealing with why can't people come? There are people from our families that didn't agree with us as a couple getting married. Are they not coming because they don't want to get sick? Are they not coming because they don't agree with what we're doing, yeah. that we are together? So that's something that I feel like all same-sex couples face anyways. And then on top of that, so, you know, with everything going on with this illness, it was, yeah, it was a lot. I felt like we couldn't catch a break one thing after the other after the other and I was like this is the one thing that like, you look forward to or like and I dream of that day. yeah I don't necessarily like to be in the spotlight of anything so I'm like this one time that it was supposed to be about us I was not <laughs> probably fun to be around because I just felt like a leaf falls and I'm crying if it wasn't her upset it was me we were at each other a lot more just because it was like such a tense situation and there were so many uncontrollables not just the wedding, but figuring out like our livelihood. You were off for a couple months, but were you gonna get paid? And my job, you know, we were closed for two months. And so like the stress of like having, you know, were we going to be able to have a job? No like, romantic moment. Yeah, Everything was, with like, business. business or work yeah. or I'm stressed or I'm doing this, I'm doing that. So I think we kind of hit a breaking point and both had to really refocus and like why we're doing this. And I think that kind of grounded us a little bit. The date was important. It was something we were looking forward to. We had this envision of what it is and what it's supposed to be and getting over the fact that that's not what it was going to be, but then we can still have that date. So then like, I reached out to my mom and was like, hey, can we do it in your backyard? So we actually did have like a little ceremony just with my parents, her parents, my sister. Two friends yeah, two came, friends came and just, everybody's in little pairs yeah. in different parts of the yard and we built our own arbor. 
I felt like the day was perfect for what it was. Actually, like the ability to be married. Having it out of my parents' house was just really special because I felt like it was like a memory that my mom will always remember. And so I was excited to like, share that memory with her and get ready in her bathroom and stuff like that. And it was like, it was very emotional. Yeah. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to join Kayla and Shanna in the spiritual union of marriage. Well, I was up there, I just remember like I couldn't even say anything. <laughs> You are my number one. I promise to always put us first. You are my sunshine, my rock, and my favorite person. I choose you, and I'll always choose you. Over and over, without a pause, without a doubt in a heartbeat, I'll always choose you. <sighs> Kayla, you are my calming voice when I get overwhelmed, and my kick in the ass when I need motivation. I vow to do my part to keep that balance strong, to cook you dinner more often than we get takeout, to take care of our fur babies and future real ones, to make sure you know how loved and appreciated you are, to learn from my mistakes when I make them, because I will, a lot, to be your equal for the rest of our lives. I love you. By the authority vested in me, by the state of Florida, I now pronounce you married. You may kiss your bride. Yeah. We were already married at that point, but I still feel like it was something we envisioned. That's our special day. We wanted to wear our outfits. They're booked out until 2022. Like, it's not like we could just be like, oh, we're like, let's have this date. Did definitely hit a window because so things too. were kind of well, they started opening up. The venue was great for our ceremony. They had, you know, the white cute folding chairs and they would have them in groups of two or three and then they would have a space we made like designated tables for just our two families and then it was just like lunchroom style seating yeah. if you wanted to sit just you and who you came with separate from other people and they were able to spread out comfortably the venue was way bigger than what our party was so it kind of seemed like it was like a bit extreme the barn was huge and but like knowing that you know if our full guest list would have been there. It would have felt like the full crowd. Right. I think the biggest thing was just those memories. I wanted those memories because it's a once in a lifetime thing. It solidifies things. It's like, this is real. Whatever the day is, it's gonna be special. So sweating those little things that you maybe have dreamed of or you thought were gonna be, in the end, it all works out and it, it's exactly what it's supposed to be. What's well, as special as you, yeah. you may get with like, what yeah. you have but you some you know we had a hard time letting go of our expectations of what our wedding was yeah. gonna look like and, you know you're dreaming of it for a year or two years however long you're waiting to have your wedding and then you're having to like deal with these adjustments yeah. and it feels like let downs but we still felt like it was the best day even with the little changes or big changes that we had this is forever you know, you figure out a way. And so understanding we've had rough times before in terms of like what we had to go through and the ups and the downs and just mm -hmm. making it through that, you have this base, this is how we can get through things. Something that my dad kept saying to us is that like, you will not just like, you know, you'll never forget your wedding, but like you will never forget you're <laughs> one of the people who had to try to get married during this. Who knows how long this will last or how this will really like, impact history in the future. And like you have these stories to tell to people, you know, years from now mm -hmm. who when like, you know, hopefully goes back to normal that, you know, it's just like a blip and you have these stories to tell. We are literally seeing the events industry deteriorate and transform right before our eyes. 
I think it's going to be at least five or six years until we are comfortably meeting with others. And that's why I tell people, strap in. My clients now are challenged to ask themselves, what about this is important to me?